Ramsey. I am super excited today to be talking to Sam Cavanaugh. Sam is the national executive producer for Southern Cross Austereo, which is in Australia, down under. Welcome, Sam. Good day, Mark. Good to talk to you. Sam, I'm excited to have you because you've been a part of something recently that is interesting and has no... Um, has no peer in the U.S. You were part of a national producers conference there for Southern Cross Austereo, and you said that brought together 70 producers from across the, the country uh, to this one conference. Um, I want you to talk, if you can, about what this conference was, who these producers are, and what the theme of the conference was and why that matters. Okay. Um, yeah, look, it's something we're really proud of. It's the, uh, I think, the third year in a row that um, that Southern Cross Austereo has, uh, has run this conference. It's essentially uh, all the producers that are involved with all our shows across uh, the both both networks of our company, the Triple M Network and the Today Network, uh, all our breakfast shows, night shows, drive shows, specialist shows, sports shows, all have producers, um, show producers as well as digital producers. So uh, the digital guys are involved in the websites and the social media around those shows. We fly them all into uh, to Sydney, and we put on a full-on chock-a-block day of uh, keynote speakers, workshops, uh, and all sorts of things um, to bring bring us all together. Uh, yeah, and this year we had our, our biggest one yet, so we had about 70 producers from all around the country. Um, we had some great speakers, and the theme of the conference for, for the first year, we hadn't had themes in previous years. Uh, and this year we wanted to do something different. So the theme was um, really a way of articulating where we're at as, as an industry in Australia. And the theme was fans, not listeners. And what we're trying to articulate there is that for our shows to grow and, and become bigger, we need to stop thinking about our audience just being listeners to a radio show. We need to think about our audience as being uh, online, on social media, uh, in events that we create, in other media partnerships that we create, um, as well as radio. Uh, so thinking about fans leads you down a whole different path of creative ideas than thinking about listeners because when you think about listeners, the creative ideas that you come up with are very specific to radio. Uh, and that's fine, but we need to be more than that. We need to be bigger than that. And the show's on our network that are really growing and adapting to this new world uh, that our audience is in with lots of different content that they're consuming on lots of different platforms are the shows that are really thinking beyond just a traditional radio audience. They're shows that are thinking more generally about fans and how they can push every piece of content that they make onto all those different platforms. Now, Sam, when you talk about the shows that are really growing, what's the metric you're using? Are you talking about growing in terms of fans, growing in terms of listeners, growing in terms of both, or some other metric? Uh, look, lots. there's probably lots of different metrics. I guess um, the easiest way in, that I look at it is create creatively. The shows that are coming up with new creative ideas and engaging with their audiences on different platforms. So they'll come up with, with, a, with a piece of content that they're going to do and they'll have a, a plan to roll that out on radio, they'll have a plan to roll that out on social media, they'll have a plan to roll that out on their show website, um, they'll look for other media partnerships they can create around that content, so that content might be on television, it might be in magazines, um, and I guess that's how I measure it. So this one, you know, one thing that we we do as radio stations is we um, we make lots and lots of content all the time. And I think in this new world that we're living in, with people consuming consuming content on demand uh, on their phone, on their iPads, we need to take each piece of content that we make and make that content work a lot harder for us, rather than just assuming someone might be in their car and. 10 past 8 in the morning and hear that thing that we did, you know, we need to take that content and really push it to where we know our audience are. Okay, well, um, let me ask Let me ask you the, the hard questions from the U.S. broadcaster. Here it comes. Are you ready? Um, am I getting real now? Yeah, well, now we're going to get real. Um, why are you bothering with all this nonsense? Because here in the U.S., 
you know, we're evaluated by Arbitron based on ratings. We're monetized primarily based on ratings from agencies that count ears. You know, if we don't have listeners, we don't have ratings, and we don't have ratings, we don't have money. All of this other stuff doesn't matter. How is that not well, true? Well, I guess the answer, the answer the, I guess the really simplistic answer to that is it's the same reason that radio stations market themselves on television and, uh, at, you know, and billboards. Like, we're, in Australia, we're in a battle of awareness. You know, we're in a, a top of mind. That's how we're, we're, our rating systems is based on what do you remember? You know, it's pretty archaic, but it's the system that we've got. And, uh, you know, we're in a, we're in a battle to, to remain top of mind with our audience. And I think that you need to do more than just be on air and doing good content on the radio. I mean, that's absolutely a, a great radio content is the, is the beginning and end of all of this. I mean, if you don't have a good radio product, you might as well not bother with everything else. But this is not about forgetting radio. This is about saying all that content that you're making every single day, how hard is that content working for you? Where else can you put it? Where else can you make sure your audience is going to see it if they missed it on the air? Um, that, that's what this is about. Well, and also, it, and it's, it, it's almost beyond that, though, isn't it? Because you said the purpose was to generate fans, not listeners. That means you're going well beyond awareness. You're trying to create people who care about what you do and come back to you because of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, when you're creating fans, you're creating people that are engaging with you on lots of different platforms. So there's shows that... Um, you know, I might not get to hear because of the times that I'm commuting or, or whatever, but I love the content they do on Facebook. So they're always in my they're always in my awareness, they're always in my consciousness. They're in my news feed. That I can and then sometimes I see something they do and it reminds me to check in with that radio show or I listen to that content and I'll give that show a tick in a book because, you know, I'm 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 still consuming their content even if you know, they're on late at night and I'm never going to hear them on the radio. Well, what I and hear... The other, what the I other hear. thing with all this, with pushing your content out on different platforms is it doesn't really cost you anything either. Like, this is not, you know... And I guess I'll give you a real-life example for us. The minute the penny drop for me was the, um, the drive show that I work on. We were preparing to take the show to London for the Olympic Games. And we took a photo of, uh, of Byron, the, the anchor of, of the show, and he had a little GoPro helmet cam on his head. And we took a photo and we put it on Facebook and we said, if we can get 10,000 likes, we'll make Byron wear this camera on his head for the whole time we're in London. Now, we ended up getting 37,000 likes in 24 hours, <laughs> which saw that go into the news feed of over a million people. And the moment I saw those metrics on Facebook, I went, that's more people than are listening to the radio show right now. <laughs> when, you know, if you're, you're talking about the importance of awareness, here in the U.S., many of the major markets are driven by PPM. Um, I, I think it's actually more than awareness that you're looking for, though. And what you're looking for is relevant to us here because you're really looking for attention, right? Because it's attention that kind of opens the door to concern and interest and that opens the door to usage and reusage and loyalty and fanship. So I think you it's... You know what, I reckon what I'm looking for is the biggest audience possible for every piece of content that I make. So if I'm working on an idea with a show, um, and obviously you can't do this for every tiny little phone topic and rave that a show does, but every every decent sized piece of content and idea that we're going to do, I want the biggest possible audience for that. And I want it on radio, I want it online, I want it in social media, I want to see if I can get it on television, I want to get it into magazines, I want to get it into the newspaper. I want everyone to know about this piece of content that we're, that we're doing. So Sam, you're right, does, it's more than what Does all that feedback on your ability to monetize what you do on the air and off or not? I don't have a an easy direct response to that other than my experience is the biggest brands, the biggest show brands that are on air have always rated the most. And those are, are usually brands and, and our most recent example is probably the Hamish and Andy show, which um, was a show that I executive produced that was the was the national drive show here for uh, the last five years, they now are doing just one day a week. Um, 
And Hamish and Andy were, were excellent at being um, taking their radio content and turning it into TV shows. They have one and a half million fans on Facebook, um, which is bigger than any other any other content brand in Australia. And they were they rated higher than any other radio show has in Australian history. So I guess that's the best example I can give you of it working. <laughs> And, and I think for every idea that we do, we see in survey books, you know, when a show has a great um, survey tactic and they roll that out across multiple platforms, it, they get the, the biggest bang for buck in ratings as well. Okay, let me, now, one of the first things you said to me was having the idea of fans, not listeners, led you to different ideas than you would have had if your focus had been just listeners. Can you give me a couple of examples of that? Yeah, well, look, there's a great example this week of um, we've got a show, a breakfast show in Bunbury uh, in Western Australia, which is about as far from civilization as you can get. <laughs> Perth is, it's you know, you fly from Sydney to Perth, it takes you six hours, and then you still got to drive another two hours to Bunbury. So it's a long way away, and, and it's a regional market. It's a really important market, um, uh, and it's a breakfast show with, that, with very limited resources, but they work really hard, and um, the, uh, it's Tom and Heidi. Now, Heidi was really inspired by this. Um, she saw this woman had posted a photo of herself, uh, who, a woman who had always struggled with body image issues, had posted a photo of her wearing just her underpants and put it out there to the world just saying, I'm sick of hating my body. This is what I look like. And the, so the female host on the radio show, Heidi, was really inspired by that. She wrote a beautiful piece and read it out on air. The phones went nuts. People in, in the market just started calling, connecting with the piece of content that, that she did. So they thought about what else can we do with this content. So mm -hmm. the audio, they cut up a photo montage and they put it on YouTube. Really simple idea. Put it on YouTube. That YouTube clip started getting shared and people were pushing it around Facebook, sending back to the breakfast show, their website and Facebook page, I'm so glad you did this, I'm inspired, blah, blah, blah. Um, they then turned that into an event with listeners in their local market where uh, they, they set up a photo shoot for everyone to come and just celebrate how they look. If you were an event in their market, again, created a show, um, that piece of content, the, the YouTube clip, got picked up yesterday by the biggest female uh, website in Australia, the biggest female blog, it's a blog called MamaMia.com. They uh, are viewed by 100,000 unique viewers each each day, picked it up and uh, and ran a blog post on that piece of content. So suddenly 100,000 people are viewing that piece of content that have probably never heard about that breakfast show right. before. And and I guess that's when you're thinking, where else can I push this content? You're not just thinking, what's a phone topic we can do? What's, a, what's an interview we can do on the air? You're thinking about how else can I connect with an audience um, above and beyond radio. But of course, it all starts with radio. But it's, I think, you know, with our audience, we're competing with so many more different platforms now and, and people can get their, get their information and um, they can get their entertainment from so many different places. Uh, I think that's that's we've got to be looking to push our content as far as it can go. Well, pushing it around because you're competing for attention and you're competing for interest and you're competing for passions. You talk about fans instead of listeners. I mean, ultimately, listening is purely is is fundamentally a passive experience. Fanship involves your heart, not just your ears. And, that's right. Uh, obviously, those two are connected. As that tactic you just that 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 act you just illustrated proves. So that's a wonderful mm -hmm. example. Thank you for that. Um, Sam Cavanaugh is. Right. Sam is the national executive producer of Southern Cross Austereo Down Under with some great examples and I'm incredibly impressed that you bring together 70 digital and program producers once a year. Um, that's fantastic, Sam. Congratulations on everything that you guys are doing down there and thank you for your time today. Great. Thanks, Mark. Good to talk to you.